In the previous video, we saw the differences between batch processing system and stream processing system. In this video, we are going to see a hands-on example on how you can create a batch processing system in AWS. Like always, you can skip to a particular section based on the timestamps mentioned in the description below. You can also decide whether you want to watch this particular video based on that as well. With that, let's get started. Before jumping into the AWS console, let's understand the architecture which we are going to design as a part of this particular video. I'm just picking a basic example of loading a file which is present in the S3 object store and getting that inserted into a DynamoDB database. So the prerequisites are we need an Amazon S3 bucket with a file. We also require the Amazon DynamoDB database where we will be loading the data. Let's presume that the data is huge but for this example, I'm going to use bare minimum data. However, imagine we're going to load huge data into DynamoDB. So in order to achieve that, we can leverage Amazon EMR, which can run Spark cluster, and you can trigger Spark jobs, which can read the file and process the data into DynamoDB. We call these architectures as batch processing architecture, and we are going to do that in this video. Also, I'm going to reduce your job by showing you how you can do this without writing any piece of code. Also, we are going to achieve this using serverless option where we don't have to manually create the EMR cluster ourselves. We are going to leverage a service from AWS called Amazon Data Pipeline using which we don't have to write code and you can use serverless option where you pay only for the compute when you are processing them. And we don't have to write any code inside EMR in case we are doing traditional operations like loading data from S3 into DynamoDB. Now let's jump into the AWS console. I have the AWS account which I had created some time ago. I'm going to show in the same account. Right now I have only the free tier enabled and based on my usage I'll be charged. So in this example we're going to use the AWS data pipeline. So data pipeline is going to create EMR cluster. It's going to use a bigger EC2 instance. It's going to provision two EC2 instance by default. So I'll be charged only for that. And for the data pipeline, I'll be charged on a monthly basis. Obviously, I'll be charged for reads and writes in the DynamoDB and also for the storage in S3. Since I'm in the free tire account, I might be like covered there. I might be able to pay only for the EC2 instances. So the prerequisites are the S3 bucket. So I need to create an S3 bucket. So right now, if I go to S3, I have no buckets at the moment. So I'm going to create two different buckets. One is for storing my source file, which is the S3 file here. and also the other bucket is for storing the EMR logs. So since I'm going to use data pipeline, it can store my logs into a S3 bucket. So I need to create two different buckets. So I'm going to use the CLI to show that AWS S3 MB, MB is for make bucket. And I'm going to say create S3 bucket under the name PP hyphen data pipeline hyphen batch. So I'm going to create a data pipeline with batch and also this is going to have the source file right so i'm going to call this as pp data pipeline batch and then source and also i need a new bucket for storing the logs so i'm going to call that batch hyphen logs so we're going to have two buckets one for storing the source file which we are going to process and the second bucket for storing the logs which the emr cluster is going to push to so let me come back to the console let me refresh this ui here so you should be able to see two buckets so we are good so we have the buckets ready now, the next thing which is pending is the DynamoDB table creation. So I'm going to create um, DynamoDB table by navigating to DynamoDB. Let me open this in a new tab. Of course, all the operations, whatever I'm showing, you can create them using the CLI to make it automated. You can use CloudFormation template. Since I'm showing it as a reference, I'm just showing you from the console. So let me click on the create table. Uh, so the table which I want to create is let's call it same way TP uh, data pipeline hyphen batch hyphen DB. Since this is a database, I'm just going to call it as batch hyphen DB. So the partition key which I want to use here, let's call it as uh, employee ID. So I want to insert, let's say, employee information. So I'm just going to say employee ID is the partition key and the table name is TP data pipeline batch DB. I'm going to keep the default settings, which is no secondary index. You can have five reads and five writes uh, under the provisioned capacity. There will be a threshold of 80 percentage when you will be getting alerts or alarms, etc. I'm going to click on create. This will create a DynamoDB with a table TP data pipeline batch DB. 
and also it's going to have a single partition key which is going to be the index so by default it will have one column which is going to be the index so we don't have to create multiple columns but we can leverage the index which is going to be the primary key now the next step which is pending is the file so we need to have a file in the s3 bucket so i'm going to use the format which dynamodb accepts so i'm going to create the data from here itself so i can click on create item and i can insert some values which i can leverage so let's say for example here employee id is mentioned as string i want to add more value so i can just say name i want to have name uh, let's call this guy as ryan i want to have one more um employee id then you have name then you have uh, city that's it so i don't uh, do we need anything else so i can maybe add what else let's say i want to add a field called status if the employee is active or not all right so i will say status is uh, active. this is how we directly insert data into a dynamodb database right so i want to convert this data into a csv format so i'm just going to click on the text option here and i'll just say give me dynamodb json and i want to convert this into a single line so this is the data which i'm going to insert from the s3 bucket so that way i don't want to have any complicated operation so i'm just going to directly insert the data into the dynamodb database you can also have some transformation logics you can have csv files you can have converters i'll show you how you can add your custom converters but uh, for simplicity i'm just going to use the format which dynamodb accepts right so if you see here it accepts the column name it also has a type and then it has the value so this is how dynamodb accepts values so i'm going to use uh, the file so let's call this as source dot json and i'm going to just paste this value right so here we had employee id we had one so i'll just mention this as two i'll mention some different city i'll say this is chris i'll also add one more data employee is from let's say chennai this is a j and uh, let's say we mark this as inactive I think all the data types which I have answered should be lowercase. So let me change this into lowercase and then. Okay, so I have three records. I need to insert these three records. Uh, but if you look at it, data pipeline can be leveraged for processing huge files. I'm just showing a small file, but you can leverage this for inserting millions of data into your database. So that's where we are using EMR cluster to process the huge file and then persist into a database. So let me not insert this data. So whatever I tried to do here is just for creating that JSON file, right? So since we have created the JSON file, so we are good with the um, uh, S3 file and also the database as well. Now we need to create a pipeline. So this is where the whole pipeline is going to help us in having no code, right? So let me go to the console. I'm going to use the service called data pipeline. So you can search for data pipeline and let me open it in a new tab you can click on get started now and this is asking me to provide some information about the pipeline so i'm going to call the pipeline name as let's say s32 demo db pipeline hyphen batch since i'm going to process this as batch so here is where you can give a custom template or you can give a predefined template so this is where you don't have to write any code when i mentioned you don't have to write any code you can rebuild from an existing template so there are existing templates where you can run aws cli commands you can export data from dynamodb into s3 or you can import data from s3 into dynamodb which is what we are going to do you can also run some emr jobs when you have your custom code built so you can have your emr jobs ready you can push that into s3 and then you can give the path of s3 into the data pipeline which can trigger the job which you have written right you can also copy data from mysql and all those other templates are also here so for our example i'm going to use the import dynamodb backup data from s3 so this is like you have a backup data in s3 which is the 
DynamoDB specific data and I want to apply that into the DynamoDB. So this is like loading data into a database, right? But I want to do it in a much faster fashion. So I can leverage import DynamoDB backup data from S3. If you have your custom definition, you can do that as well. You can load that custom definition from a local file which you can upload or you can take it from S3 as well. Or if you want to use your designer tool and you want to build it, you can definitely click on build using architect where I will show you there is a UI where you can modify and add or create your template. So for our example, I'm going to use the import uh, DynamoDB data from S3. Since I have selected S3 as a source, I need to select my source path here. So I'm going to select the uh, data pipeline batch source and I'll say select. Also, I'm going to give the database name, I mean the table name. So let me copy the table name and have it here. You can also change the write throughput. Right now it is uh, 0.25, so I'm just leaving it there. I also have the USD East one as the region mentioned, so which should be fine. One other thing to notice is data pipeline is available only in US East one, US West two, uh, and also two regions inside Asia Pacific and one in Europe. The next thing is the schedule part. How do we trigger data pipeline? There are two ways of triggering it. One from the pipeline activation, the other from the schedule. So I'm going to use the pipeline activation where I'm going to click on a button and then it can trigger it. Or it can do a serverless mode as well, which I'll show you in the end of the video. Um, the other option is you can have a scheduler which can trigger the data pipeline. So I'm going to use the pipeline activation so that I can trigger it immediately and show you. The next configuration is the logging. This is where we are going to use the log bucket. So I'm going to select the log bucket so the logs can be pushed there. For security access, if you're using it in production, obviously you will have to have a custom role which has restricted access. Since I'm showing it as a demo, I'm going to use the default role here. If you want to have tags, you can mention the tags here which can be leveraged, which will be useful when you want to track resources based on a particular key value pair. If I click on activate, the pipeline is going to be created. There is an option called edit in architect. This is where you can click on edit in architect and you can see a UI where you can see the flow of information. So this is where I mentioned that you can have S3, you can have EMR cluster. So by default, if you see here, EMR cluster is created. So I did not even mention anywhere that I need a EMR cluster because data pipeline by default gives you a EMR cluster. The source was S3. So that's how it is uh, having the source here. Now, one thing to note is how will the data pipeline know that the format what i'm going to upload is of a particular type this is where you will have to mention the format so when i click on s3 data node there is this option called as data format the moment i click on data format it adds a new drop down so in this drop down i'm going to click a new data format and when i click on this new data format it gives me different options so this is where i can select what type of format it is so if i have a csv file i can mention a csv file and I can add columns into it. But if I have a predefined DynamoDB data format, I can directly create the predefined DynamoDB format and I'm done with it. So this is the only custom configuration which I need to do because I'm just using the DynamoDB format. If you're using CSV file, you can definitely use CSV. If you have TB, TSV tab separated format, you can use that as well. If you have regex, you can do that too. The moment I click on save, the pipeline can get activated. So when a pipeline gets activated, it means it's going to run the pipeline. So I'm going to upload my file, the source.json, which I created into the bucket so that the file is ready. So in order to do that, I can do AWS S3 copy. I'm going to call source.json and I'll just say S3 double colon TP data pipeline hyphen batch slash source. So I've copied the source.json into the destination bucket now i can go to the console and i can click on activate so the moment i click on activate the pipeline is going to get triggered so this is how the pipeline view shows up uh, now if i click on refresh you see that there is one pipeline which is just waiting meanwhile i also mentioned that the emr cluster is going to be created let's go to the ec2 instead of s3 let's go to ec2 we can go to the EC2 console and then see if there are any new EC2 instances which are getting provisioned. So what is going to happen under the hood is data pipeline is going to create new Amazon EMR cluster. So in order to create an EMR cluster, you need EC2 instances. So that's what this guy is going to do. 
it's going to create ec2 instances so if you see here right now one ec2 instance got provisioned it's running it's initializing and the instance type is m3x large so that's what is getting provision that should be one more ec2 instance which should get provisioned after this i believe so there will be two ec2 instances by default run which can run your job which you have provided so in our case in the pipeline what we provided is we wanted to load the data from s3 into dynamodb so it's going to use only one job if you have any complicated job if you have a, a pre traditional etl kind of a mechanism where you read the file convert that into a specific format and then load it then you might have some specific logic so that's when you will have a complicated use case so that's where your cluster can expand and reduce as well so let me refresh this it will yeah so there are two ec2 instances right now so these are the two ec2 instances so let's wait until this status check shows something something like two slash two or something but yeah let me refresh so this status also will move from wait for runner to running that's when we know that the job is going to run uh, if you click on this arrow mark you can see what's happening so right now the stage is s3 input node has been detected that means the pipeline detected that there is a s3 bucket uh, the next thing is to wait for the emr cluster to load that data from s3 and you can also see the logs here so let's um, wait for the cluster to run i mean the job to run and then we can see the logs here after so many refreshes finally the status of the data pipeline is running that means the job is running let me quickly go to the dependencies go to emr cluster which is showing us green and i can see logs are not available yet once the logs are available you should have a link here and the moment you click on it it can show you the logs if you want to see the logs you can also go to the s3 bucket and then you can see them uh, let me go to the batch logs uh, you can see that there are folders there is emr load so see here these are the logs so there is attempt one and then there is a folder for each node i think they have daemon provision setup i mean there are so many log folders here i mean there are tons um, so if you are curious you can go and check it in the s3 pipeline or if you want to do it like how i do it you can come here and then just refresh here and then wait until you get a path here uh, this should take a while because it's going to create a cluster and then you're going to run a spark instance in it so it's going to create two different nodes and each of these nodes spark needs to be installed and then they need to be run in a cluster mode and things like that so it takes a while the good part is it does everything in the serverless mode so if you remember i just clicked only on the activate option and it creates ec2 instance on its own i can go into the dynamodb database and also click on the refresh button to see if the data is loaded now if you look at the refresh i can see all the data loaded right so that means our job succeeded and it loaded all the data i have inserted three lines and all these are loaded so finally my data from the s3 is loaded into dynamodb without doing any change right let me refresh the data pipeline here it is still running now let's say if i decide that everything is good and i want to mark this particular job as finished i can definitely do that using mark finished also you can configure the job success or failure to publish that message onto a sns topic and from the sns topic you can trigger a lambda which can again maybe re-trigger the pipeline or do something else it can also trigger alerts now if i refresh if you see here the status went to finished that means the job has completed and the ec2 instances should be getting terminated see here the instances are getting shut down now so the data pipeline once it is finished its job it went and shut down the ec2 instances now i mentioned earlier that you can have a next level of automation you can automate the triggering of the data pipeline which i did by using the activate button instead of doing that you can leverage event bridge to send notification from s3 if a file arrives so when i drop a file into s3 bucket i can get a event bridge notification by pushing that into an sns topic and that can be triggering a lambda then that lambda can trigger the batch creation so we can have lambda triggering the aws pipeline activation and aws pipeline will go ahead and create a emr cluster use the job configuration to load the data from s3 bucket into dynamodb i'm not showing that this part however if you had seen my earlier video on getting notification from s3 into lambda it's almost the same 
the only difference is in the lambda code you will have to write a code to trigger the data pipeline which you can definitely do that using aws sdks i'll just summarize what we did we created two s3 buckets one with source where we are going to drop the source json file which we need to load into dynamodb database and also we created a log folder for getting the logs from emr cluster we created a dynamodb table with a primary key we created data into the s3 bucket by using the dynamodb data format we then created a data pipeline using which it created a emr cluster on the fly using two ec2 instances it loaded the data from s3 bucket into the dynamodb directly this is a classic example of a batch processing etl kind of a system where we loaded data from s3 into dynamodb directly and if you remember i mentioned about the no code and the serverless options we did not create anything manually and we did not code anything this is how amazon data pipeline is providing a fully managed etl solution for loading data into dynamodb i hope you found this particular video useful do let me know if you have any specific use case which you would like me to make on aws as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much